All right, out here at Osh 25, out here at Williams Booth, the Fly Corvair. We got the uh, the awesome uh, Fly Corvair engine out here, and he's got some news to talk about this year with a new distributor. So real briefly, what is it? And then I'll turn around the other side of the camera and we can talk shop. Uh, it's a new ignition system, actually. Okay. Uh, it's a whole new unit. Uh, it's complementary to our previous unit that uh, is still airworthy and great and everything. It's just uh, new and improved and uh, upgraded unit. But we can take a look at it. Okay. and uh, go from there. Okay, ignition system for Corvairs. Uh, here is a standard 2850 Corvair, but all Corvairs have the same uh, flight ignition system. Uh, our traditional ignition system, uh, a lot of people look at it and they say, oh, it's single ignition, but it's really redundant ignition. It has two, of, two sources of sparks, and it has two coils, and two of every piece that's affected by heat. Uh, heat is the number one source of failures in ignition systems, so you got to have two of them. Uh, but if you take a look at our traditional ignition systems, they have one distributor cap and they have single spark plugs per cylinder. On a six cylinder engine, if you uh, have uh, a cylinder go cold, uh, it still makes 78% power to 80% power, even dragging the dead cylinder. It constitutes an annoyance, not an emergency. If you have a, uh, an engine with less cylinders and you lose one cylinder cold, uh, then you probably have an emergency situation. If you've flown uh, small continentals over the years, a lot of people stuck in exhaust valve or something like that, and you understand that the airplane really is uncooperative about gaining altitude. Uh, if you have a four-cylinder engine operating on three cylinders dragging a dead cylinder, six-cylinder engine with a dead cylinder uh, on uh, dragging the dead cylinder with five operating cylinders uh, is an annoyance by comparison. So six cylinder engines, perfectly fine to have single spark plugs and single distributor caps. Again, these are not heat sensitive components. So uh, I, uh, those types of things you can have one of, but you do need two sources of sparks and two coils. That is sort of a, a reasonable requirement. So in our traditional systems that we've had for uh, 22 years, uh, those distributors uh, had a set of points inside and an electronic ignition inside. And they work great, and that's referred to as an EPX ignition. And an EPX ignition has been around since 2005. Uh, they are fine, they're perfect, they're great. This is an option, this is not a requirement. Uh, this is a serious upgrade and improvement, and I like it, but it's not making the old system unairworthy or uh, you know this is just something for people to look at all the new engines will be equipped with these I'll be making these exclusively from here forward but if you happen to have one of the hundreds of EPX distributors I made keep using it they're, they're great let's take a look at what's different about this installed in the distributor machine this is the new unit uh, this is known by the initials DFI which is dual fixed ignition this is a brand new unit. The housing is CNC'd on a five axis mill. The shaft also is monolithic, except for that gear. If you come up here and look right in there at the trigger wheel, that is cut out of the same single piece of metal that the rest of the shaft is and properly ground. That is an original Corvair drive gear. That and that washer right there are the only two pieces that come out of the standard Corvair ignition system. Everything else, is a brand new manufacturer. Again, DFI is dual fixed ignition. If we look at it in here, that is the primary, the red unit, and that is the secondary. They are on independent plates and the relationship to each other can be varied to stagger the ignition timing. Now we have one set timing that we like and the machine that we'll see in a minute will set that timing at the factory with us and you will never need to redo, redo that. Now you're going to check the ignition like you would check a mag for mag drop before flying, or you will check the timing with a light at condition inspections, but there seriously is no maintenance on this unit to be done, not like the EPX distributors which required occasional points adjustments. If you take a look at this, this is dual fixed ignition. The ignition timing is at 28 degrees 
That's what makes full power in a Corvair. This operates at 28 degrees on the primary, except when it's being cranked. Below 400 RPM, there's a 10 degree electronic retard in this unit. So the 10 degrees gets taken out below 400 RPM. You crank the motor, you're cranking at 18 uh, degrees of total advance. Engine cranks smooth, starts, no problem. The backup ignition on this side is a simplistic unit, even though it's larger, it's actually simpler inside. And the backup unit is set at 18 degrees all the time. At 18 degrees, the engine will make 90% of its total power output on the backup system. There's an advantage to the timing being retarded on the backup systems. If you are experiencing like a misfueling accident where you had very low octane fuel or an overheat condition for some exterior reason, uh, you would want to go to the backup ignition and it will be uh, retarded to 18 degrees. And it always cranks easy on that one. But for normal operation, you'll be operating on the primary, the primary being the red one, and that's going to be at 28 degrees. So. If you look at it, these two plates are slightly staggered from each other and they are on independent plates that are set in a relationship to each other to address that stagger when we're building the distributor. This machine that you see right here is how that's set and the plates are, are uh, tied into each other on the machine with the correct stagger that does not change. We can check it with a timing light and on the degree wheel. Once it's checked, it's installed in the distributor, it's locked down, it's assembled as a unit, and tested as a unit. These two pieces are driven by a tooth belt on the underside of the table. They are synchronous to each other, so you can use the timing light, set the RPM you want, and check it right on the degree wheel, and check the stagger between the two ignitions on the assembled unit. That's the last time it needs to be checked. You can just take it and stick it in your engine from there. Come in for a close-up on this and I'll show you the. This is a five axis machined housing. It's a body of rotation down here that can be made on a lathe. That's not a problem. But if you look at the top, the top fits a modern Ford distributor cap. And the modern Ford cap is asymmetrical. So when you have an asymmetrical side to a body of rotation, you need a five axis mill to do that uh, efficiently. And these are made on absolutely modern first class equipment. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, offering everything from state of the art glass cockpit options to advanced control modules that power and control your entire aircraft. Gradia Aero Group at GradiaAero.com. Proudly representing these best-in-class brands for experimental general aviation. Sherwings, BD Aviation, and MW Fly. KFA, Kit Planes for Africa, engineered for adventure and build for the bush is their motto. Offering several stole kit aircraft options like the Expedition, Safari, Bush Baby, and Explorer. Find them online at kitplanesforafrica.co.za. Bravo Fox at bravo-fox.com the U.S. distributor for Black Shape Aircraft providing sales, maintenance, spare parts, and repair services located at the Sheridan Airport in Indiana. Stewart Systems, manufacturer of non-hazardous waterborne products for covering and painting aircraft. Offering in-depth workshops teaching you how to DIY fabric and paint. Find them online at stewartsystems.aero. Visit us online at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for all things DIY aviation. And consider supporting us on our Patreon page to help us bring you more original aviation content. One element of our traditional ignition system, the EPX, that had a traditional mechanical advance in it that builders were uncomfortable with was the requirement that once a year, when you're doing your condition inspection, you have to run the engine up to about 2500 rpm and for two or three seconds stand behind the engine with a timing light and check the timing and uh, quite frankly over a lot of years we had uh, a certain percentage of builders who did not do this 
and uh, this would be equivalent of doing an annual on a certified airplane and not checking the mag timing, which is kind of unthinkable, but people did it anyway. They later confessed that they were afraid to stand behind a propeller or never even tried it. Uh, I would point out as a 35-year A&P mechanic, there are lots of operations where you work behind the propeller. It's virtually impossible to stick your hand into the propeller because it's blowing you backwards at 150 miles an hour. Rather than argue with people, we have an ignition system and this can be timed at idle. So when the engine's running at 500 RPM, just barely licking over, not making any thrust or a lot of wind, you can take the timing light, aim it right at the back of the timing marks on the harmonic balancer, check it, and you're golden. You, there's no need to check it at elevated RPM. This is a modern Ford cap, and on the inside of the cap, it actually uses a General Motors V8 rotor. So <coughs> Ford and Chevy working together for the ignition system. But this has the HEI-style terminals, which are superior to the 1960s well-style terminals. I like that part. The rotor is uh, superior to the uh, traditional Corvair rotor. But again, it all comes uh, te tested on this machine and you just install it and check the timing at 500 RPM. Uh, if you want to find out more about this specifically, you can look at my YouTube channel. We'll have videos there. Or you can join my Facebook group, WW Fly Corvair is the address of either one. R&D project uh, underway now. This is a pair of uh, Sensenic hollow carbon fiber blades. These blades have been used on ground adjustable props on Corvairs for a long, long time, and they have an excellent track record in the Sensenic ground adjustable hub. They have a five pin positions. They work really great on rate of climb in the first pin position, and they have a fantastically high cruise speed in the fifth position. The problem is on a ground adjustable propeller, you have a compromise where you can't have both in the same flight. Enter FP Propeller from Italy. Uh, we are the dealer for this, and this is an FP Propeller hub that can utilize a bunch of different blades, but we were very interested that they can use the Sensenic blades. They work cooperatively with Sensenic. You order the prop from FP, but the blades go directly from Sensenic to FP. The, it is an electric constant speed prop. So then, if this is in operation on the aircraft, you will be able to have the low pitch stop for takeoff and the high pitch stop for cruise flight. So uh, effectively, we already know the blades are a really, really good match for Corvairs. They've been proven for about 10 years. And what we're doing with the FP hub is allowing them to be used in electric constant speed, which I believe the Mosaic rules just made legal for LSA pilots. Quick shout out to our patrons over on Patreon and our co-pilot status, Zach Newsom, Mike Babcock, Lynn Gardner, Gary Martin, Michael Smith, and Steph Sabo. Thanks for watching this episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. See you in the next one.